So good day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Community Central. My name is Brian Proffitt with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. Um, before we begin, and I introduce today's guest, some general housekeeping notes. Um, in your uh, viewing screen, you will see a question and answer section. If you have questions for our speakers, um, by all means, get those questions in into the Q&A section. Vote on the ones you want to hear about the most, and then you can hear your question being asked after the presentation in the order that they were most voted on. So with the housekeeping out of the way, I'd like to welcome our two guests today from the Linux integration engineering team here at Red Hat. We have Tomasz uh, Tomacek and Franciszek Lachman. Uh, both coming in from the Czech Republic today. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us. Oh, well, thank you for the introduction, Brian. So let's take it away. And welcome to our presentation about Packet. Uh, my name is Tomáš. I'm product owner of the Packet uh, project, of the Packet team. Uh, and I'm, I was like engineer and now I'm having the product owner role. Uh, so. And today, Frantisek is with me. So please, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Frantisek. I'm a packet lead, and we, together with Tomáš, we started this project a few years ago, originally as my diploma thesis with a huge help of Tomáš. But that was a few years ago, and now it's completely different thing. So Tomáš, can you please describe others what we've prepared for them? Oh yeah, absolutely. I can do that. Uh, you are right, Franta, that it took us a few years and we have actually built a pretty in interesting project that many people are using already. So today we are actually, uh, like I'll start with the introduction, uh, then I follow up with uh, how, how packages are actually being delivered to you if you are a federal Linux user. So how code gets from the upstream repository to your laptop so that then it's easier for everyone to understand what features Packet is uh, offering and how can the, some of them simplify the update process. Uh, and then Franta will actually speak about those futures, features. Uh, and for those that are already using Packet, uh, I think some, are, some might already be uh, here. Uh, you will hear what we are planning in future. And please ask those questions. We are so happy to answer them, and we'll do that at the end in the Q&A session. Okay, uh, we'll start with the introduction. So, what's Packet? Uh, Packet is actually a CI uh, solution for upstream projects that uh, use RPMs, or they, they want to uh, deliver their software into uh, distributions that are based on RPMs, such as Federal Linux, CentOS Stream or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We are also offering uh, automation for uh, updating uh, packages in Federal Linux. Uh, packages has native uh, integration on GitHub. We have uh, our own GitHub application and we also support GitLab. Uh, you can see that we already have a bunch of uh, upstream projects that use it, either for the integration or for the automation of the upstream delivery. Uh, by default, usually people use it uh, on GitHub uh, as the in in direct integration for pull requests, but Packet also has a command line tool that you can use or use it in your scripts. And if you ever come into our repositories, we are all also on GitHub, uh, all our repositories that are composed of the project you probably see one of these avatars because these are some of the people that are working on Packet today or there were contributors or members in the team in the past. Uh, so if you open a pull request, that would be very nice. Some of these uh, avatars will be there uh, to give you a review or uh, provide you help with issues. So maybe a little bit more about goals, what we are trying to achieve with our project. Uh, so we are trying to validate upstream changes as they are being worked on, uh, meaning to provide feedback back to the contributors right away from the downstream Linux distributions, uh, those that we have in Red Hat, that's Federal Linux, CentOS Stream, or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. 
And this is really important because when the code is being developed in upstream uh, and then it's released, it can take some time. And before that release gets to downstream, it can be already weeks or even months. And when such regression or problem is found, it's already too late and it's, it's pretty costly to fix that problem. So when we provide this feedback right away, uh, the contributor has their code still in mind and they fix the issue right away. So no need to create a release that has a problem uh, in future. And also, if since we are talking about like updates, we also try to automate the, the, uh, the upstream delivery process as much as possible so that it's very convenient to get new updates in Fedora Linux. Uh, you might be already interested in like how hard is it to try it or if you are actually allowed to. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so as I said, we have native GitHub application. Here is a screenshot how it looks. Just go there, install it and follow the steps. This is all documented on our website, packet.dev. So you can go there, find uh, the guide how to use packet uh, in the user documentation and just follow the steps and go with it. In GitLab, it's a little bit more complicated because GitLab doesn't have native integration. So you need to configure webhook delivery to packet yourself and then follow a process of installing it. There is one step before actually using it, and that is that we need to allow your project to be uh, like so that Packet can consume the events from your project. Uh, this is for sake of security, so that like no one sending uh, like uh, improper stuff in there. So we want to uh, like bind uh, like your GitHub project with uh, your Fedora presence. So we require that you have account in the Fedora account system. So just create it, uh, link it with your GitHub account, and then we have an automated process how uh, to allow this, and then you can start using it right away. So just write one YAML config, put it in your upstream project, uh, figure out how to do an RPM spec file. So either create it, get it from Fedora Linux, or, or download it, uh, like on the fly, it doesn't need to be included in the upstream project and you can get RPM builds for pull requests, commits or releases. So let's see uh, what it's like to get new code from upstream project to on your laptop with Fedora Linux. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm going to describe is, yeah, that starts in upstream and, and ends uh, with a package that is installed on your laptop. So it obviously starts in the upstream project. So in here, uh, we have an example from one of our dependencies. It's a library that Packet is actually using internally. So whenever we want to get code from this library into uh, for our users or for uh, our tooling, we would go to this uh, go to this page and create a new release. You can see an example in the screenshot above that there was a release created uh, 20 days ago. So we would start there, create a release. Uh, the release, uh, the output of the release is an archive. So this archive then needs to be brought into Fedora Linux infrastructure uh, or, or Fedora infrastructure. And we put it inside the archive database. So one needs to be a maintainer in Fedora to be able to do that. Then you need to update uh, git repository to point to the new version. This is done in the distribution git or in short this git. Uh, so every package has their own git repository and every Fedora version has their own git branch. So if you are doing, if you want to update multiple versions, you need to create multiple commits on every branch. Usually we do this by creating, uh, oh sorry, it's a different slide. <laughs> so. Uh, this is done in an RPM spec file. Uh, so for those of you that don't know what it is, it, it's a file that contains metadata uh, and steps how to build that package, how to install it. It also contains links to sources or patches. So it's, it's like the recipe how to build RPMs out of your software. So when this is updated, we, created, uh, we create a new pull request uh, in the distribution git. 
uh, wait for CI to finish, see all those green checks so that we know that uh, the build is passing and it will uh, go just fine. Mer merge those pull requests. And when they are merged, we can finally build them officially inside the Fedora build system, which is Koji. There is also, a, oh, oh yeah, here is a screenshot how it can look. Uh, you can see that one of our teammates uh, built a package some time ago and, and here is how it looks. So there is also alternative build system in Fedora called Copper and package is using this one to do the CI builds in the upstream so that we don't pollute the official build system. So when the builds are done, uh, we are still not finished uh, because builds can be done at any time. So we want to promote those builds to be like official updates that are meant to be delivered to users. And this intent is done by creating a new uh, update inside Bodhi, uh, that's the update system in Fedora. Uh, it usually takes a few days to reach the stable point uh, by the karma system. So usually Fedora users can provide uh, good karma to promote it so that it gets delivered uh, more quickly or after a few days uh, it's automatically being flagged as being delivered. And we also have a screenshot how it looks like. So you can see here past updates for the uh, Python Ogre library. And finally, when it reaches stable, uh, it gets into a new compose. And from there, uh, your, your users can finally install that update and utilize that sweet new code. So let's sum this up. Uh, you can see there is a bunch of steps here. And if you imagine that every step has a few commands to run to do it, maybe even hours to wait for that operation to finish, so this can easily take days from getting from the new upstream release to getting that uh, code to your users. At minimum it's hours, but usually it's definitely days. So Franta, can Packet help us with this somehow? Yeah, exactly. So as you as Tomas mentioned, there is a lot going on and Packet can help you with that. So let's take a look what Packet can provide. So, uh, starting from the upstream, Packet can trigger the copper builds for your changes. It can be used as a CI to verify buildability, but also to provide or maintain copper, repos copper repositories for your users. So, by adding a few lines to your configuration file, uh, you can have a copper repository including a build for every single commit being done to a configured uh, branch. So, and as a team, uh, we collaborate with Copper team, so we try to uh, do this integration as smooth as possible. Uh, as an next step, you can test your changes in the disposable virtual machine. We use a testing farm uh, as a backend for this, and testing farm itself uses DMT slash FMF format for test definition. Uh, but no worry uh, if you don't have any uh, tests written in this format yet. We provide installability check for you, so you can at least start with something. Uh, and uh, also. Uh, testing farm people are always uh, happy to help, so don't worry. Uh, and not only you can use Fedora or CentOS Stream as a virtual machine, but for Red Hat people, we can also enable internal branch of this testing farm and uh, provide Red Hat REL uh, images for you. Similarly to Copper, uh, you can use Packet to do Koji scratch builds directly from the upstream for your pull request, uh, new commits to the branches or releases.
So this was about upstream, but how to get your changes uh, to the distribution. For exactly that reason, we provide a so-called proposed downstream workflow. Uh, and as a result of an upstream release, you get a set of pull requests in this Git uh, packet, updates the spec file for you, and also uh, put a, an archive to look aside cache. Once the downstream PRs or pull requests are merged, or there is a new this Git commit uh, repository, but it can also trigger a Koji build, either scratch the non-production one or the production one. And as a last natural step, uh, once there is a successful Koji build, packet can uh, just create the code here update for you. And then people can, or the maintainers or other users can check the update, provide karma, and uh, see, uh, finally it will get to the distribution. So in short, you have the whole workflow covered by packet and the whole name uh, manual uh, intervention is the review of the downstream disk git pull request. And that's for a reason. So that will, that's what we have currently for you, but we have also plans. So let's take a look at what we are planning for the next couple of months. First important thing is so-called pull from upstream workflow, which is really, really similar to the proposed downstream. So starts uh, with the upstream release and ends as a pull request in this Git. But this time you don't need to have any access to the upstream repository because you don't have it, you don't want it. Uh, and with this pull from upstream, you will configure this directly from this Git and we will use uh, upstream release monitoring to get notified about the new release and we'll do all the handling for you. So put the archive to look aside cache and open the pull requests. So next uh, bigger feature is monorepo support. A monorepo is a one git repository with multiple packages. Uh, currently it's not possible or by having a few hex, but this will allow us naturally to define a set of packages that are in this repository and then you can use the jobs or workflows of packet like easily like before and uh, the third uh, and huge improvement is integration with Red Hat Image Builder. Red Hat Image Builder is a tool to build uh, new virtual machine images and in context of packet we are working on a way how to Start starting with the successful copper build. We will take the uh, built RPMs and put them in a new virtual machine. So you can the changes you've you've done in a pull request now you you can try it in a virtual machine uh, like uh, like users will uh, get that once it gets to the uh, to the distribution. Uh, if you want to play with that for now, you, uh, we have a command line interface for this available and working on a, a system integration. So that these are the most important things we are planning. Uh, if you want to uh, know more about packets, so let's take a look at various sources you can check. First thing, first thing, so, uh, obvious is the documentation, the uh, URL is easy, just packet.dev. Uh, maybe worth noting, uh, there is an onboarding guide uh, that Tomáš mentioned, and also there is a federal release uh, guide uh, you can 
uh, check if you don't uh, know where to start. Uh, also, we do the weekly uh, production updates or deployments. So we also uh, provide a short weekly update every time we do a new deployment. So if you want to know more what we are planning, uh, what's new, what was fixed, or there is any issue, so check, you can check these uh, weekly statuses. And Packet also has a front end. We have a dashboard, which is a view on the Packet service, where we can check the various results. And also, if you get the uh, statuses for the for your commits, you will get a URL of this dashboard. But you, a dashboard can be also used to click through the various relevant uh, data and get from test the result to build the result, etc. And if things go wrong, we have also a status page. So if there is anything broken, any issues, I hope we don't have much of these, but in these cases, we provide info on this status page. So, and ideally you can reach us on various, uh, in various ways. So don't be afraid. We are quite active on a packet uh, matrix channel on fedora.im. So uh, don't be afraid and we will try to help you. Also, it's bridged with the packet channel on LibraChat, but sometimes it's the con connection is a bit flaky, so we are preferring a matrix one. Uh, also, for the Red Hat people, we are on a packet Google chat space, so can contact us by that, or there is a hello at packet.dev email. So, and that was mostly it. So we've covered uh, what packet is, uh, what is the workflow of getting the code to the users, how packets can help you with that, and also what packet is planning in the future. And now is the time for your question, if you have any. So thank you for the attention. All right, thank you both very much. So we do have one question, and if anybody wants to ask any more, now would definitely be the time. So the question is from Alejandro who asks, is there a way to do the whole workflow, but keep uh, the packet configurations in a separate repository. For example, have the upstream project packet agnostic and then trigger everything for another repository. Alejandro asked this because uh, we have a project where we are trying to collaborate with different companies. Yeah, Cur currently, I hope it's not easily possible as a service, but uh, one can use packet from a command line, which is not so ideal and loses a lot of benefits, but that's, that's possible. But if, and that, that's true with other, other feature requests, if there is a huge ask for that and we will improve a lot someone's workflow so we can think about that and try to implement a way how to do that. So Frantisek, as far as I understand the question, I would say your slide when you were covering the pool from upstream, the new feature we are going to work on, that should actually help with it a lot. And Alejandro, that's exactly the use case we are trying to cover, that the upstream project is not interesting in having the packet configuration in their upstream repo because they want to be agnostic of all Linux distributions. So with this feature, you should be able to set this up between Fedora infrastructure and uh, have that whole workflow done by packet without upstream even like seeing it or anything like that.
Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, Eduardo asks, can you show configuration file examples? Is that something we can do today or? We can, uh, maybe it's the easiest way is to take a look at our documentation page to packet.dev slash docs slash configuration. But also if you want some real examples, you can take a look at the packets configuration file itself, which is on github.com slash packet slash packet. Uh, and there is a packet.yaml file. Uh, not sure, Tomasz, if we have any better uh, image or, or example at hand. So I can try to show one since uh, this, because I think we actually added them recently in the documentation, right? The examples, as far as I remember. If you do, you might want to increase the size of your fonts hmm? okay, when you I'll get there. Thank you. Okay, so uh, in here, I'm in our documentation slash configuration slash examples, as Francisic pointed out. And here we actually have snippets, how you can actually do various use cases. So for example, let's open the first one. Uh, there are like these small snippets. These are usually taken from uh, existing users because these are the things that people usually do that they are like they have a common use case so we try to cover this in the documentation so and then we also have uh, jobs uh, as, as Frenchy pointed out that like if you want to run builds or tests you need to explicitly specify this intent uh, by specifying the job and then providing the configuration how package should actually do that and you can also go to github and to our uh, to our project we are using our own service so we also have the configuration file available there uh, or to any of our users uh, that use it i hope the this answers the question and maybe from uh, take a look also at the uh, packet onboarding guide you can see the link on the left menu uh, what Tomasz is, and it describes step by step what, what's the packet config look like, uh, what needs to be filled there, and how we think about the, the config, what it contains. Okay, we have another question from German. Um, is packet language agnostic? Um, they know that Fedora has a different process for Rust, for example, and does that necessarily apply to packet? Uh, it is uh, language agnostic. Uh, we already have users that uh, have their projects written in Python, C, Golang, I think even Rust, uh, I'm not sure to be honest right now, uh, but yeah, it's fully uh, language agnostic. Uh, for those users that we already have, we already have the best practices how to use Packet with their languages. But if you run into something that's new that we don't have much experience, so we will probably need help or work with you more closely so that uh, you get best out of it. Maybe here it's for noting that uh, the workflows we set up for packet can be configured or you can like replace a particular uh, step by your custom action, uh, by your command. So basically anything can be done via packet, but maybe a bit harder to set up or configure. But if it, the uh, tool is, package in Fedora, there shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, that's right. Actually, some of our users are very creative and they are putting uh, very interesting shell scripts in their uh, configuration files and we are really impressed. <laughs> okay, 
Well, those conclude all the questions that we have from our audience. Thank you, everyone, for participating in that respect and uh, helping us to expand on this knowledge of packet. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today on Community Central. Thank you so much for having us. Welcome. Okay. So that concludes another episode of Community Central. Thank you again for joining us. Look for additional uh, Community Centrals coming up in the near future on communitycentral.tv. And until then, be safe, be well, and have a pleasant day.